Hello and welcome back after several months to Minecraft where I will be continuing my advanced 8-bit computer and hopefully making a bit of progress. Right, so I think in the last video that I did, we did a lot of bussing. Um, all of this yellow bussing I think we did, minus the repeaters and this green bussing too. We may have even done some of this uh, blue bussing and whatever this colour is, some of that as well. I'm not really sure, but I'm fairly sure we didn't do anything significant. And I'm also fairly sure that we didn't add any repeaters, so um, in fact I know we didn't. Because off camera, about a week ago, I um, I spent an awfully long time adding repeaters to all of these various uh, buses. Um, so yeah, I have done that, and because of this, at the end of this video, once we have finished what I'm making in this video, I will release a world download, so we will um, be able to all be at the same place and then I can continue hopefully with my um, with my computer so yeah um, that's about all the progress that I've done um, an explanation for why I haven't been doing Minecraft videos for ages um, I lost interest to be honest I haven't really um, done much Minecraft whatsoever I haven't played it since Christmas time really at the um, at the latest so so yeah that's uh, that's why I just lost interest. wasn't really having uh, having much fun playing Minecraft. So, um, but I thought I might as well continue this um, this series because it's gaining me quite a few uh, subscribers. So yeah, I've decided to hopefully finish it soon. So yeah, anyway, uh, into the building. What are we going to build today? So I thought since we've done all the busing now, which is good, that we can actually move on and do another like component of the computer, and that component is going to be the program counter. And as you can guess, it is the main counter which drives the program ROM. So basically, all it does is it um, in turn it activates each one of these lines of code. And by activate, I actually mean just turn on, or rather, they will actually all be inverted to begin with. So what it will do will be to turn off. So that means that any torch on the side of here will then be turned on. So by default, it'll be off. And then when the program counter like cycles to this line, we turned on. And if that was on the right side, be on this side, it would turn on that line. And as these are all bust, it will go to the um, respective parts of the computer. So yeah, that is what we're going to be doing today. And it's not just a simple counter that will count up like one, two, three, four, or rather zero, one, two, three, four. It will. Um, it can accept a memory location from this. Uh, this bus here so this is uh, where we will load an address into the program counter so based on a condition it might be cycling through it gets to line 5 which would be this one the sixth line and then it might say load uh, program line 30 and it'll jump all the way to the end minus 1 and then uh, continue executing from there and then once it's executed all the way down there it'll come back to the bottom so yeah, that's what we're doing today. Um, if you are not going to, in fact, no, I'll release the download with this not in. Um, so it will be, you'll get the download with it looking exactly like this, so you can build on from here. So I advise you to get this world download before you continue with this video. So yeah, if you don't, if you haven't um, decided to download the world download, you can bust it like so and you need to make sure that your last green line is um, directly across from this red block here and then we can uh, continue so I'm building this from memory so it might be a bit hazy but uh, here we go so we start off with a memory cell I believe uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think this is gonna take a bit of time to remember I don't know um, hopefully that is right and then where do we go from there ooh okay um, hmm it should be oh yeah there we go I know what we do we go like that and we place a repeater like so and then we come on the back and we place a torch like that which will power that it comes to the back of there, on there, and then on the side, and then on the top of there, we place one more. 
So basically, it builds up the repeater torches. Uh, repeater, <laughs> repeater torches. What are they? We build up the torches in like a stack, like so, and then I think we place a block there. A uh, block, a piston. Jesus Christ, it's been a while since I've commentated while building, and then um, like that. Right, we'll see if this works because it will line up with the pistons that I'm going to build now. So come across and place a block there. Come one above it and place a piston here. After that, we want to do the same on this side. So we've got identical pistons. Um, like that. Ah, damn it, not like that. Like this. Right, so that's that done. And then we need to basically I think no we can just do it on top because we're gonna stack this all the way across because it's a nice counter that stacks perfectly um, we can just build it like that and it's too wide which is perfect for our buses um, it's not my design it's by a guy called Hans Lemerson something like that good redstoner from a long time ago but um, doesn't play anymore so sadly excuse me right um, I just realized that I think does this need to be on the other side does it need to be on the side or not? I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, that needs to be like that. And then we need it like that. Right. So as it stands, that should um, that should be okay. By the looks of things, it's not it's not too bad. I've just realized because, uh, because this bussing is different on these green lines, stacking this across is gonna break the bussing. Which is a bit of a pain. But I will just go in and add those uh, add those repeaters in afterwards. Right, so I'm going to sacrifice that bit of bussing and just go ahead and stack it to save time. So if we get our position and we want to make sure we get it all. So we come down here, select that block. Uh, my world edit has been a bit weird I think with redstone so wherever possible I'm going to try not to select a redstone block with um, with my wand, it's just been a bit weird. Make sure you get that top redstone in, so come here and get that one. And then what we want to do is face that way and stack, no, face that way and stack seven. Like that. All right, so that looks pretty perfect, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but as you can see, this bussing has broken, so we need a, um, need a bit of green wool. Ah shoot! I'm not. Some of these needed. Um, thing is, let me get a redstone block to test it. Right. Some of these lines didn't quite reach, so uh, just bear with a second. Ah damn it! How did I manage to break that block there? Right. So that wants to be in like that. And as you can see, that has automatically loaded it into uh, here. We might need to add a little uh, line of pistons or something, like an inhibitor, to stop it from uh, automatically loading into here. Although, I'm not too sure that would be necessary. Uh, so that one needed one. That one definitely doesn't. That one won't. Uh, this one might. Right. Oh no, there's a... Uh, no, it's not that one, sorry. It is this one. This one might need one. Oh no, there's a uh, repeater there. Good, good, good. Uh, this one doesn't. I don't think this one does. Nope, that one doesn't. Right, I think that's it then. Oh wait, no. Test these last two. That one doesn't. This one might do, I think. Yes, this one does. Right, so the <laughs> how unfortunate. It's so close. Right, so come in here and just uh, do the usual. Oops, like that. Right, so now to explain. Geez, it's been 10 minutes already, that's crazy. Right, um, or thereabouts, because the day is 10 minutes in Minecraft. Anyway, that is not what I was going to say. Right, so basically, um, this line of pistons here, this one here, is just a, re um, a reset. So when it gets powered, it just... Um, deletes, well, removes whatever is saved in these memory cells. These memory cells here are simple bezel flops, or whatever you call them, basil flops. Um, just a very basic way of saving memory, uh, saving data in memory, should I say. And you get rid of that at the end. Right, so let's uh, build a little 
pulse limiter and I will show you how this works. So if we come here, just delete that for the time being so it doesn't get powered. Build ourselves a cheeky pulse limiter. Set this to 4. Uh, oh gosh, it's been a while since I built one of these. It's been a while since I've done any redstone to be honest. Uh, set that to 1. This is not an efficient pulse limiter. Anyway, so that's that. Get a button. And we are ready to test it. Uh, and replace that bit of redstone. Right, so if we give this a pulse, what is going to happen? So first of all, this piston is closing off that redstone signal there. So that's not going to go through there. So the only thing that's going to happen is going to power this... Um, power this piston that's going to go down into the position like one down so that means that this uh, repeater is going to power it and it's going to turn this cell on once that has happened this will be on which will in turn power off this uh, torch which will power on this power off this power on this and we will get to the stage where this is in that position obviously but the piston will be extended and it will let the power through. So if we show that with a quick demonstration, which I hope will work, voila. Um, I think it might be wise just to add a um, just to add an extra tick of delay on these. I think I've had problems with this before where it um, it just glitches out a little bit with one tick on those repeaters. Right, so that's like that, and what will happen now? So we have, a, if you imagine this is an A-bit number, this being the least significant bit, so the lowest bit, so 1. Uh, this will be 1. Uh, so yeah, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, so now what will happen? It's exactly the same, except this time, what's going to happen with this uh, piston? So it's going to get powered down again, which will effectively chop this redstone, It'll do the same as what this line does, and it will uh, like break the signal. That means that'll turn on, that'll turn off, that'll turn on, that'll turn off, and this one will close. But as this one is currently open, this one here will do, this second cell will do exactly the same as what this first cell did, and it will turn on. So effectively what's going to happen is those two are going to swap. Voila. And now if we see again, this one is going to... Right, so let's see what's going to happen here. Because this is off, uh, this is closed, this one will now remain on, and now this one will turn on. And now we have a three, and now they are both open, so these two will now turn off. And the third one, so bit four, the bit with a value of four, will turn on, and so on and so on. And this will count, so four, five, six seven eight and so on and so on so this is effectively just a counter um and it's a very very nice fairly compact counter at that and it has a nice reset line as well which is always handy and when we want to load an address into the um program counter all we do is we reset this oops like that and we make sure that Obviously, this will be handled by the uh, decoder, the ALU decoder, which I need to add an extension to to give this functionality. So we'll do that in another video. Um, so when we load a, a address from the memory into the thingy, what do you call it, the program counter, this will be down, this piston will be down, this piston will be down, and it will simply travel along this bus and into the program counter. Uh, you may be wondering how this 8-bit um, binary number gets decoded into effectively decimal. So this is not one huge like 32-bit long decimal number, is it? It is a binary number. So this is zero. Uh, this is a decimal number. Sorry. So it's not binary. It is decimal. Is what I was getting at there. So this is zero. That's one. That's two. And effectively, all you have to do is hook this into a binary to decimal decoder, which is uh one of these things over here so if you can imagine one of these but 
um, instead of being three wide, two wide, and instead of simply doing seven numbers, decoding 64. So yeah, it's an extremely arduous task, so I'm not gonna build that on camera, I will again provide you with a world download. Um, it's not complex, it, it just, all it does is converts binary to decimal. So yeah, that will be in the next video. So I think that will do it, hopefully it's not been too long, we can um, just delete that first so nothing gets powered, and then delete the rest of this. So yeah, we've built a program counter, quick and simple, not a hard task to do. Um, in the next video, we're going to come down here and we're going to build the comparator, which I've already laid out. Some little signs are to um, to explain it. Oh, what's this here? Oh yes, this is um, this is some of the uh, changes that I made while I've been away. Um, I did the busing, which I talked about. What else to do? I did. Oh, output from the ALU here. So. Um, this is the output register here. It gets this will this will be hooked up to the clock. So every clock cycle, this will refresh, um, and so it will hold the current output from the uh, ALU. So all I did was take this uh, and bus it up here. So uh, this is effectively our output. So right now, if we're doing any addition or subtraction or any sort of ALU function. Um, it will be shown here, which is very nice indeed. This will be hooked up to our binary to uh, no, it's not binary, uh, BCD display, and we will also just uh, we will split the signal to. We'll have a standard binary. We will have a and a binary to decimal. Okay. As well as that we could use this as a GPU coordinate. We could split it into uh what could we do i don't know we could take this output we could put it into an x and y register and then we could use it as two gpu coordinates which is a bit of a um bit of a ball like to be honest but you know it could be done and basically these as coordinates for basic uh geometry functions uh in a gpu like line drawing and um like coordinate plotting that kind of stuff but we, i'm not going to do that i think i've said that before gpu uh, goes beyond the scope of this. It's just it's just it takes an extra 10 videos and, that, and I really can't be bothered And finally the last little thing I did was a color change of the mux uh, Did I? Oh, yeah, I did um, I'm not sure what I did to be honest. What did I do? Oh, yeah, I changed these I don't know if you're currently looking at your version of this. I changed the um, The lines of this I uh, Oh, yeah, I put these as half slabs because it was creating buds with the normal um, like, do you know, I created put them half slabs here because we're getting buds. I also did half slabs here, and I changed the colors because I realized they were wrong. Uh, they didn't match up to like when these are down, they send a signal to a different place, and I wanted these lines to match up. So, like, when this one is down, as well as the other two, it goes to the green place, which is the address register, uh, not the address register, the program counter. Um, and when the yellow one is down, it goes to uh, the general purpose registers. Uh, so I wanted this one yellow and red. When just this one is down, it goes to the um, ROM, uh, to the RAM decoder, and it uses to be accessed for RAM. So yeah, that's what I did for that, and I think that's all of the changes since the last video. So hopefully this has been a shorter video and uh, you found it informative. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, uh, please stick around for the next video.